Hey, welcome to this tutorial where I'll show you how you can use the Facebook login API to authenticate users using your app on the Google Cloud platform. So the first thing you need to do is navigate to developers.facebook.com and create your developer account. From there, select create app on the top right and enter a display name for your Facebook developer application. I'm going with GCP Auth Demo and then you'll also need to pick a category. Select create app ID and enter the um, capture there just on the security check to make sure that you're a human and submit. Then Facebook will automatically provision you a developer application. Select on the Facebook login option, getting started, and enter on this section the valid OAuth redirect URI. Now this needs to be the URL of your application. So the Google Cloud Platform application. So my project is called Facebook Auth Demo, as you can see in the tab on the top right. So I've entered facebookauthdemo.appspot.com and then save that. Adding the URL there ensures that the Facebook login API accepts requests from our URL. Um, so when we deploy our project in a minute, uh, it'll be able to communicate with the Facebook developer API as we've configured there. Okay, so if you go to the Google Cloud platform now, which I've got open in another tab, and then uh, click on the Google Cloud uh, platform console button there to launch the shell, uh, and then you're going to um, just clone some sample code, just a bit of a starter pack. If you've seen some of the other videos, I talk through um, how to build up this application in those, but you can just go ahead and clone this URL, and uh, that'll get you started up and running. If you've got the code from the previous tutorials, feel free to use that. Okay, just going to clear that to make it easier to read. And uh, you can see there that it's cloned that directory. So I'm going to CD into that directory and I'm going to make two new folders. The first is called config, which is where I'm going to put all the configuration data, all of the uh, authentication stuff. And the second is called views. So there's going to be a slight difference in this version to the one that I made in previous videos. Uh, and that's going to use a templating engine to render the HTML stuff. Uh, so I'm just following a convention there with a views directory. Okay, the next step is to install some dependencies that we need for our application. So if you've used Node before, you'll be very familiar with NPM. It's the package manager for all of the Node modules. So I'm going to do NPM I, which is install, dash S. Now the dash S uh, tag there will automatically save these dependencies to the package.json of your application, which is exactly what we need in this instance, because it'll mean when we deploy it to the cloud, Google Cloud Platform automatically goes and installs all the modules we need to make it work. Okay, so just uh, adding all of those in there, and I'm going to hit enter. Perfect. Okay, so that's added all my dependencies to the package.json, and now we're in a position to start writing some code. So on the top left of the shelf, you select the file and then launch editor. It'll take you to Orion here, which is the cloud IDE. Okay, so you can see the views folder is in there and the config, those are the two additions. I'm just going to grab the index EGS file and drag that into the views folder because, again, I'm just following the uh, convention. It's better practice to have all of your views in, in one location there. So that's what I've done. Okay, the next step is to make a file uh, in the config directory called uh, config. And in here, I'm going to do uh, module.exports. Okay, and this will mean that whenever I import this file, whenever I import my config, I automatically get the parameters set here. So I need to set three parameters. The first is the Facebook API key, and I'll show you where to get that in a minute. The second is the Facebook API secret, which is the secret identity that our app will use to communicate with the Facebook developer API to enable login. And the third thing is a callback URL. Um, this is just good practice to, to externalize all of these configuration settings, which is why I'm doing it this way. And the callback URL in this instance is slash auth slash Facebook slash callback. Perfect. Okay, so once that's set up, if you go back to the Facebook uh, developer dashboard and copy the app ID into the API key box, 
and then copy the app secret into the Facebook API secret option that we've, in it, we've written there. Okay, and that's it for the config. So we've set it up now so that we've got a configuration file in our application that holds all the data needed to communicate with the Facebook developer API. So let's open up index.egs now and, and write some code that our users will see when they reach our application. So you'll notice here that I'm using a bit of syntax that you might not be familiar with before now. So I'm using uh, the EJS templating engine, and that enables me to write JavaScript to control how my page renders. So here you see that I'm writing a simple if statement, so I'm checking whether or not the user's authed. And then within this code block, I'm going to write some HTML that I want to render on the page if my user hasn't logged in yet. So just below this section, I'm going to write the HTML code. So I'm going to add a div and give that a width of 500 and a height of 200 pixels so that everything's contained in, in a, a nice div. Now you could add whatever um, HTML you wanted in here, whatever styling, um, but I'm just going to write um, a very simple one here just to, to get you up and running as a bit of a demo. So within this div I'm going to add a line of text to ask users to log in. So let's go with h1 and then close those tags and here write please log in. Perfect. And then the next stage is to add the button, the Facebook login button um, that when you click it will make the call to the Facebook developer API and get you to log in through Facebook. So uh, the URL that I want to navigate to when when somebody selects this button is, is on my own web server. It's slash or slash Facebook, and we'll write the code to deal with that in a minute. And I'm just going to add an image, which is the Facebook login button. Now, to make this easy, I've um, just created a quick bit.ly link, which I'm going to use as the source. But this, is, this, goes, uh, this just wraps the Facebook developer um, content delivery network which has the login button. So bit.ly forward slash uh, Facebook, sorry, running out of space there, Facebook login dash GCP. Okay, and all that will do is render the Facebook login button so there's something for our user to, to click on. Okay, so that's the code for when users haven't authenticated yet. It's going to ask them to log in and put the Facebook login button. But what happens if they are already logged in? Well, I'm going to handle that condition now. So we're going to just write a, an else clause, again within the angular bracket and the percentage sign, which distinguishes between the EJS and the HTML. And here uh, you can see that I can also do this in line. So um, the percentage followed by the equals there says that actually I'm making uh, I'm making reference to a variable here. So um, auth, which is where I'll send the user information dot display name. Uh, so that what we're hoping they'll do is when they're logged in, we render their display name there after hello. Uh, and that's it. It's that simple just for this basic example. Uh, we've got a basic condition, some some uh, templating there. So if the user is not authenticated, we'll ask them to log in. If they are authenticated, we'll say hello and then their display name. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you check back for part two, and I'll show you how to write the uh, node application itself. Thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please hit subscribe and let me know in the comments.